Have you fallen in love with one of those beautifully staged homes in a new construction neighborhood? I love them too. Who wouldn't? They're so amazing when they're decked out and staged just perfectly. Well, today in this episode of Kim's Home Smart Buying Tips, I'm going to give you seven tips for buying new construction homes because buying an existing home versus a new construction, it's a very different process. So let's dive into it, okay? We will review these seven tips in detail during this video. I'm Kim Butler with HomeSmart Realty Group here in Northern Colorado, and I really love working with new construction. I grew up in the construction industry, building custom homes and cabinets with my father. So I have that background and understanding of what it takes to build a new home and go through the process of uh, making choices and decisions with buyers. I enjoy representing buyers who are thinking of buying a new home. Sometimes buyers will end up changing their mind. They might start out planning to buy a resale home and then end up buying a new one or vice versa. Our job is to help you find the best fit given your unique circumstances. There's no one absolute answer whether new construction is better or not. It depends on a lot of things which we're going to discuss with you and help you figure out what's going to be the best fit for you. And if you decide on new construction, you're going to want to listen to these seven tips that will help you understand what you're getting into. Today we're going to be focusing on those high volume national builders who build hundreds of homes and multiple subdivisions in a year. As opposed to the custom home builder that might build one or two homes for somebody in a year, okay? because they're very different. So let's get into it. Seven tips coming up. No surprise that tip number one is to use a competent realtor. Now I know what you're thinking. You, you think, well, you're a realtor, so obviously you would say that. Well, you'd be, you'd be correct, but probably not for the, the reasons that I'm gonna explain to you. So let me give you a little scenario here. We just had our association meeting here this week and one of the national builders came and gave us a presentation for the realtors. They love realtors. They encourage us to come. In fact, they give extra incentives and bonuses. So why do they do that? Well, sometimes buyers get the mistaken idea that somehow they're gonna save money by showing up at a model home and without a realtor, not being represented. You don't know what you're walking into. Who does that salesperson represent? They represent the builder. And in a transaction, there's usually a listing agent that represents the seller, in this case, the builder, if it's new construction, and a buyer's agent that represents the best interest of the buyer. Don't go in there unrepresented. That is just not wise, and I'll explain why. Here, let me give you a scenario. So, in new construction, there are always problems, okay? When you go to the model, the model looks perfect, but when you get your house, there will be blue tape all over the place, imperfections. Uh, stuff that has to be corrected, or maybe they put the wrong color of brick on, or maybe they didn't put stone where you wanted it. All kinds of issues come up that have to be dealt with. Okay, so let's assume that this builder has 50 homes going at the same time, and they have buyers all complaining about things, and let's say that there's four complaints that come in at the same time. Yours is one of them. You have two problems and you've gone in there unrepresented so you don't have a realtor. These other three people, they have a realtor. Okay, who do you think is going to be at the bottom of the totem pole when it comes to getting your problem solved? Any idea? Well, if you thought it would be you, you'd be right. And let me explain why. Uh, if, if you're not happy, you might tell five or six people, right? Who are you going to tell? 
Well, what if a realtor is not happy? Who are they going to tell? The, the builders know where their bread and butter is, believe me. And they know who they need to please. The people with the realtors, they're going to get a little preferential treatment because how many sales do they represent over time? And I go to the association, to, back to my office, if I have a bad experience with a builder, bam, they just lost all kinds of business. But if it's just an individual, they, they're, you're going to be at the bottom of the totem pole. So just little scenarios like that can make a lot of difference. Let me explain how this business works, the relationship between national builders and the realtor industry. The builders know where their bread and butter business comes from. 80% of their sales comes through realtors. So they're not ready to mess that up for an individual buyer that wants a discount. The budget for these national builders, they make that several months in advance and they have the budget in there for their marketing, their advertising, their sales staff, and the realtor world. So. When an individual buyer gets the idea that they're going to get a discount, that's just not how the industry works. So there is an exception. There might be a, an individual salesperson that wants to get both commissions for themselves, which is really not the way it's supposed to work because they won't be representing you. They're representing the builder. The builder is who they work for. That's who they get their paycheck from. That's where their loyalty is. So if you want represented, you have to have your own realtor. And the commission for your realtor is already built into the price. They're not going to give up 80% of their business to mess up their relationship with the realtor world. So just do yourself a favor and get a great realtor that understands the new construction process, how it works, and that they can hold your hand through the whole process and make sure it goes smoothly, and then you end up with a beautiful dream home just like you're planning on. These tips that I'm gonna be giving you are, there's a lot of pitfalls and opportunity to get frustrated there's, there's stress anytime you buy a new house, but new construction, nine months process and mistakes are made or weather gets in the way, delays, all kinds of stuff. We help you keep things in perspective and keep on track and we watch out for you. And we don't represent one builder. I represent 50 plus builders and there's different neighborhoods and there's different tax structures. One is a metro tax, one has an HOA, one doesn't have an HOA, one doesn't have a metro tax. Or we might find the perfect resale home with mature landscaping. You don't have certain problems that a new, new house has in terms of landscaping. So there's a lot of things to consider, okay? Get a realtor. Get somebody that understands construction that will walk you through the process and make sure that you end up with a successful experience with a minimal of frustration and we're in your corner. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is to understand the pros and cons of resale homes versus new construction. New construction smells new, nobody's lived in it, everything's upgraded the way you want it, and it's a new neighborhood. You don't have to worry about uh, problems that an older home might have. Uh, so that's on the upside. Uh, maybe on the downside would be you have a little more work which is okay if you, you just want to understand that landscaping in the backyard and all of those kind of things, uh, you're going to have trees to plant and it takes a while to get your landscaping going. So that's one of the issues. 
Another issue with a lot of new construction nowadays is that they're in a metro taxing district, which in effect can almost double your tax, your property tax, on a yearly basis. So you want to be sure that you understand that as you're going in, okay? And another issue with new construction is they're only in certain neighborhoods and maybe geographically you want to be on the other side of town. You have to go to where the subdivisions are to end up in a brand new home and that might be great for you or it might be an issue for you. We're going to help you weigh the pros and cons so that you feel comfortable and we'll show you houses in both areas and help you come to the best decision for you and your family. So we just want to make sure that you understand that landscaping and fencing and some extra expenses might occur and a little more work, but you end up with a brand new home. And in some cases, it's the perfect solution. It just makes more sense. So that is tip number two. Tip number three. Understand the hidden costs of new construction. So the first hidden cost that you're going to run into is called lot premium. Every builder knows all lots are not created equal, right? So in our example here, we have mountain views and a view of a lake. So the builder knows that those lots are not equally valued and some are more desirable than others. And then there will also be a difference in the sizes of the lots. The bigger lots will be and have a higher premium. And your lot premium will usually be between 5,000 and 15,000, 20,000 for the most desirable lots. So that's the first thing that you need to be aware of. When you go in, they will give you a base price and you'll be looking at an amazing model. So different builders have different base prices and what's standard and what's not standard. So you might be looking at a house and you go, this is exactly what I want. But you go to a house that doesn't have all those upgrades and it looks um, cheap and uh, it just looks very plain. It does not look like the model home. So that's one thing you want to know. Some builders have a lot of upgrades that are standard and some don't. Everybody knows the fun part about planning your own house is picking out the trim, the colors, the appliances, the flooring, the lighting, all that kind of stuff. And these big builders, they usually have a design center where you go. Now, when you go to this design center, it's going to be, wow, look at all this stuff. Well, that's where it could, you could end up adding 10 to 20% of the base price by adding all the upgrades that you might be interested in. So you need to maintain your budget and know what your budget is and work within that. And that's where your realtor can help you pick uh, one builder versus another. Some of them have almost nothing standard. Everything you see in the model house is an extra, an upgrade. But then some of the other builders, they have a lot of nice upgrades already built into their base price. So if budget is a concern, you need to pay attention to that and discuss it with your realtor and then establish your budget that you're not going to go over, okay? So just a word of caution, the design centers are amazing and those model homes look so beautiful. That's what you're going to want. Nevertheless, think about whether it fits your budget or not and then go forward that way. Also, think about the resale value of your home. There are certain upgrades that people just kind of expect. And so if you cheap out too much on like granite countertops and the quality of your cabinets, that's going to be a hard thing to fix if you want to resell that house, you know, in three to five years, say. Okay, so 
keep in mind your budget and have fun, but don't go hog wild. Tip number four is negotiating with the builder. Your realtor will have the experience to know when you have leverage as a buyer and when you don't. It's all about supply and demand and timing. So there's if you're starting with dirt in new construction and it's a seller's market, chances are there, there's usually no negotiation on the price. You might be able to negotiate some of the little terms, uh, but it all depends on how popular that builder's product and that neighborhood happens to be. If they're selling houses like hotcakes, you're not going to have any leverage. However, when once in a while they they have a buyer that backs out at the last minute and the house is already built, okay? So if if they have an inventory house that doesn't have a buyer, they could be losing money if it just sits on the market. So at that point, as a buyer, you would have a little bit more leverage and your realtor will be able to help negotiate a good deal for you and maybe get some extra benefits thrown in. Another thing, uh, when you walk in, if you walk in without a realtor, they might say, we're going to save you some money. But in fact, they are actually just giving you uh, incentives that they were going to give you anyway. <laughs> so don't be fooled by that. Uh, the one thing that they will always do is they have their own lender and they build in incentives if you will use their lender. So a lot of buyers will use that lender, but not always. You want to double check with your own lender. We can recommend lenders as well and help you find out if what they're telling you is actually a benefit or if it's sales talk, okay? So negotiating, there are times when you have more leverage and your realtor will know that and be able to help you get a good deal. Get daily mortgage rates from our website. Tip number five is important to understand the difference between a builder's contract and a standard real estate state mandated form, the contract we use for resale homes. They are completely different. Uh, builders operate under a different set of rules and laws. The contract that we use for resale homes is one standard form. All realtors statewide use the same form and it has a lot of protections built in it for the buyer. But the builder's contract is a completely different contract and it is written in favor of the builder. So it's really important to understand what you're signing there. It's a lot harder if you want, if you get cold feet eight months down the road and the cost has escalated, I had this experience. I had a buyer walk away from $10,000 earnest money. You, it's a lot harder to get your earnest money back from a builder as compared to a resale home. It's a different contract. So you need to be aware of that, okay? And you're... Your realtor will be able to help you understand and see the differences. So make sure that you understand that, what you're getting into. And if you're just talking to the salesperson in the model home, you're not going to know what you're looking at or where the little booby traps are that get you snagged up, okay? Tip number six is all about inspections. It's important, even though it's a brand new house, to inspect it. As I like to be there all the way through the process. I take pictures of the footings, the basement, the studs, the all the way, the sheeting, the whole process. I will be taking pictures of your house so that Later, we can remember what was inside there. So when it gets framed up and the plumbing, the rough-in plumbing and electrical is in, before they put the drywall on, that is a great time to have an inspector come and look at that house and just make sure that everything looks correct before they start putting the drywall on. 
light fixtures, placement of outlets, all kinds of things are easy to fix before the drywall goes on and a lot harder to fix afterwards. Or maybe they made the wrong size window or they put the window on the wrong side of the, the room. All kinds of little issues can come up. You want to be on top of it. And uh, if I'm your realtor, I have a construction background and I'll be in there taking pictures and keeping track of that project all the way along. So you won't have to worry about it. But just realize you need to do an inspection and right before closing at the end you got to inspect it again and that is a time when you'll find little things that need to be fixed and that's where you'll see the blue tape on the walls <laughs> so just realize that's part of the deal that's part of the process everybody goes through it don't be afraid of it Tip number seven is to have realistic expectations about the timeline, how long it's going to take if you're going from a dirt start all the way through. It, it's weather dependent, uh, economic changes in the world, supply chains. If you have a hurricane in Florida, all of a sudden all the sheetrock all the drywall is going to that area. There, there's a lot of different things that can change the timing. So make sure that you're, you have some flexibility built in at the closing because it can be plus or minus a month or two of whatever they tell you in the beginning, especially if you're coming from a dirt start. Now, if timing is critical for you, uh, a resale house that's already move-in ready might be a better solution or an inventory home in a new construction neighborhood. A home that is either all the way finished and is ready to move into or is within 30 days of being finished. That might be a better solution if, if, you don't, not, if you're not flexible on the timing and your lender can help you with bridge loans. We, we know lenders that do bridge loans make it so you can have that smooth transition. So just be aware that f completion dates are estimates and it's based on weather and all kinds of issues that are beyond the builder's control. They do their best to be on time. Nevertheless, it might be delayed for any number of reasons. So just realize that okay be realistic cut them some slack hey it's been a pleasure sharing these ideas with you these insights to help you understand new construction there's a lot more detail if you have questions reach out to us and go to our website but be sure and call us and give us a chance to help you walk through the process of new construction i love new construction just realize there are issues there always will be and we can deal with them but it's a lot easier to deal with them if you have uh, an experienced competent realtor helping you all the way through the process so reach out to us and we will be there for you we have your back